the copyrighted program created by Rio Grande. Los Angeles County Sheriff's Office calling all cards. Attention all cards. Broadcast 265 regarding a missing person. Be on the lookout for Bill Williams. Last seen driving east near Puente. That's all. Rolls and quits. Frederick Lindsley speaking. The man who was responsible for your program sat down with me after a recent broadcast to talk things over. He said that no one could be happier with the way the program was being presented, that he knew Calling All Cars has a tremendous audience, but said the man whose responsibility it is to justify the many thousands of dollars it costs to bring you these broadcasts, while nothing we do brings us more pleasure than giving this program, we would like to have some concrete expression of loyalty to calling all cars on the part of those who never miss a program, but who, for one reason or another, never have gotten around to their neighborhood Rio Grande station for a practical application of that loyalty. I'll leave it up to you. And so, friends, the cast and I are putting it up to you. We believe five years of our endeavor to give you a program of interesting entertainment should stand the simple test of friendship. If you have enjoyed calling all cars, Will you put Rio Grande products to one fair test? The size of your purchase doesn't matter. All we want to do is prove that you folks will respond to a reasonable and fair request. The sponsor wants me to express to each of you who so graciously responded in the last week our sincere personal thanks. May we expect the same friendly gesture during the last week from those of you who haven't taken the time to see your Rio Grande this year. Will you make a point to see him tomorrow? Wish him a Merry Christmas and thank him for calling all cars. The story we are to dramatize tonight has been taken from the confidential files of the Sheriff of Los Angeles County. We have therefore asked Sheriff Eugene Biscalou to open our program. Thank you. It's seldom that one has the privilege and opportunity I have tonight to talk so many, to so many people at one time. That's why I want to wish every listener in to this great program of calling all cars, a very fine cast assembled here, a very Merry Christmas, and a Happy New Year. The man who perpetrated this crime was a man with a long criminal record. He had just finished a sentence in the county jail in Los Angeles. He was a confirmed recidivist. And if ever a man possessed a homicidal mania, he did. It is gratifying to know that the alertness of the Ontario officers and the modern equipment of law enforcement agencies resulted in the quick capture of a man who without doubt would have continued his criminal career. How the lesson that crime does not pay was brought home to the criminal in tonight's story, we shall hear as the program proceeds. On a little farm near Jefferson City, Missouri, a group of young men are gathered around an open campfire. wasn't so bad. You know, we ought to get on the radio. <laughs> yeah, there ain't no radio stations near here. I don't think we're good enough for the radio yet. Me and Bill was talking about it last night after we got through, and we thought that maybe a little later... We might go to Hollywood. Hollywood? Holy gee, Bill. You really think you might go? Well, Bill thinks so. I'm not so sure. Now, you will be, Tom, after we get singing better. What about your old lady and your holding? Well, we'll sell the holding take Mom with well, us. I still think it's a crazy idea, Bill. Me and Mom was talking about it this morning. Huh? Well, what'd she say? Oh, you know her. Didn't have much to say, just listen and said whatever we boys decided yeah, to do. Yeah, she's, well, never complain. Hey, you might get in the movies if you ain't, huh, Bill? Sure, why not? Me and Tom would make swell cowboys. We got the clothes. We both wrangle cattle some of our last. Uh, it all sounds swell, but somehow I'm a little afraid of it. How do we know we could get work? Oh, shucks, Tom. All we have to do is go to a radio station, sing for them. They'd hire us. You bet they would, too. You guys are darn good singers. Yeah, and maybe after you got settled, me and Joe could come and join you. Sure, me and Pat are coming uh, running if you said so. Why don't you come with us now? Well, uh, 
can't leave right now. Kind of my old man needs me for harvest. I ain't got the dough, but we'd come late if you said so. And don't be too sure we're going either. This is just a pipe dream of Bill's. It ain't neither. I'm going, and if I have to go by myself, I've been reading all about it. I'll start as an extra, work my way up till I'm as big a star. I mean, till I'm a greater actor than Buck Jones. You oughtn't to believe all them stories you read about Hollywood. Why not? Look at all the people who have gone to Hollywood and made good. Well, what about all those who didn't? Well, they just weren't as good as you and me, that's all. That's right. You guys got what it takes. Sure, yeah. Tom will get in the notion after he thinks about it a while. Practice another song, huh? Now, we'll knock him dead. <laughs> what do we sing? Uh, lead out, Joan. We'll join in. Okay. Close your sleepy eyes, my little buckaroo. While the light of western skies is shining down on you. Don't you know it's time for bed another day? Months later, we find Mrs. Annie McWilliams and her two sons, Thomas and Bill, in an auto court on the outskirts of Los Angeles. Bill, Tom, breakfast is most ready. <laughs> Those boys. Boys, breakfast is ready. Hurry up. Yes, ma'am, Mom. I never in my born days practice in life doing. What next? Oh, well, maybe it's all for the best. Oh, gee, Mom, more cakes. See, they... Well, good. Sit down and eat your bran. These are bread in a minute. Yeah. I declare to goodness. What's the matter, Mom? Nothing, except we've been here over a week now, and all you boys have done is play around and drive the wheels off that car. Oh, but gee, Mom, we've got to be able to find a way around, ain't we? We don't want to be taken for Hicks. Is that a crime, to be taken for Hicks, as oh. you call it? Bill didn't mean that, Mom. He means we have to learn the ropes and get acquainted with our surroundings. Know where the radio stations are and the picture studios. Yeah, Hollywood's a lot bigger than either of, either of us thought it was, you know, Mom. Gosh, it's spread over the whole blame countryside. <laughs> it's too big for me. You sorry we came, Mom? No, no, I'm not sorry. That is, if you boys get to be famous. Oh, we will, Mom. It's a cinch. Wait till we get started. We'll show them, won't we, Tom? Well, I hope so, for Mom's sake, anyway. Give me your cereal dishes. Your cakes are ready. You know, Mom, we, we heard about a place called Central Casting today. We're going to register there for work tomorrow. Central... Then we'll show you. We'll Central be so Casting. busy. What's well, that? I'll tell you, Mom, you see, you, you register there for work and... And tell what type of acting you do and everything. And every time there's a part that fits you, they call you and you go to work. Sounds mighty good. Of course, on the other hand, suppose they don't have many calls for the type of work you do. Don't eat so fast, Bill. Say, hey, Mom, we'll be so busy and make so much money, we'll make your head swim. We'll each have our own car and all the clothes we want, a swell house in Beverly Hills, a gardener, a maid. We'll be two maids and, and a chauffeur. <laughs> Gosh, will be swell. That's a fast, Bill. Wait till we make our first million before you spend it. Bill is always so impulsive. I do hope you don't get into any trouble. Please be careful who you take up with. I expect Hollywood's full of all kinds of awful people. Oh, Mom, quit worrying. Everything's working out swell, ain't it, Tom? Well, we ain't done much so far but gawk, but uh, I guess we'll make it all right. Oh, sure we will. Then we can send for Pat and Joe. Yeah. Well, we better get going. This is Monday and a good day to start out. Oh, the sooner the better. It'll be Christmas pretty soon. We want to make a few thousand dollars between now and then so as we can have a nice Christmas. Be careful, boys. Watch your driving. These crazy people out here will run you down if you don't watch out. <laughs> we'll be careful, Mom. Don't you worry. We'll about phone it. you as soon as we get lined up, Mom. You really think you'll get a job today? Oh, sure. Now, look, why don't you go over to the office and listen to the radio, and when we phone, you'll be right there. We'll see. Well, goodbye, Mom. We'll be home for supper early. Long, Mom. Good luck. And phone me just as soon as you sign the contract. 
But breaking into pictures wasn't quite so easy as the boys had thought it would be. Days went by, discouraging days for all three members of the McWilliams family. The days soon stretched themselves into weeks and still no sign of work. The boys began parking their car in a central location and walking to the various places that might give them a few hours' work. They registered at Central Casting and soon learned that organization didn't call an offer of jobs. The mother's face grew thinner and more pallid. New lines appeared. The boys would have to take some kind of employment soon. Their money was getting low. Oh, I'm glad you're home. No, Ma. No. Well, how'd you get along today? Any luck? No. Now, don't be discouraged. You'll find something soon. Gosh, if you think with all the pictures and radio programs, you could find something. You will. Hungry? Mm, not very. What did you have for lunch? Milkshake. A milkshake. Why, land above, that ain't enough lunch. No, you're spending a lot of money for lunches. Milkshake's enough. Not the way you boys like to eat. Put the table up and we'll eat in about five minutes. Bill, you run over to the grocery and get some milk. Okay, Mom. Got any money? Maybe you better give me two bits. Okay, here. Hurry back and I'll help Mom. Okay. Better get raw milk, Bill. Okay, Mom. How do you feel, Mom? Fine. Now put that table up like a good boy. Sure. You know, Mom, I think we ought to go back home. Why, Tom, what makes you say that? We can't find any work. We're going to go broke. You mustn't be discouraged. Here, put these knives and forks around. But I can't help being discouraged, Mom. We call Central Casting every day, and all they say is, call later, call later. We go to picture studios, and the gateman won't let us in. We haven't even seen a picture being taken, let alone working one. But you will. I know you will. You go to the casting offices of the studios, and they almost laugh in your face. What about the radio station? We've auditioned at all of them. They all say the same thing. We haven't anything right now, but keep in touch with us. That's all we get all day long. Why don't you take a regular job? Get a job in a gas station or in one of these nice big markets. You could look for something else in your spare time. I thought of that. But before we did that, I'd rather go back home and work for somebody on a farm again. This place gives me the creep. Everybody and their grandmother seems to have flocked here with the same idea we had. Whatever you boys decide to do. Well, this was all Bill's idea in the first place. I should never let him talk me into it. Even if you are two after twins, Bill almost seems younger than you are. He's more irresponsible. You are more steady. Mm, darn glamour that's got him. Believe me, Hollywood's not all it's cracked up to be by long shot. I wish Bill would hurry and get back. Everything's ready. Mm, probably thought he saw a movie star and following to see who it is. Maybe you'd better go and see if you can find him. We'll wait a few minutes. Any mail? No. There's a bill there on the icebox. Must be from the garage. Had to have the wheels lined up. Tires are wearing out. It's always something. That sounds like Bill now, talking to somebody. About time. <laughs> Wonder who it is. Huh. Some dark-haired, smooth-looking guy. Looks like an actor. Maybe one of the studios have sent for you. They're coming over. Oh, dear. Is my hair messed up? No, you look swell. Sure, with pleasure. Oh, Mama. I want you to meet Mr. DeBose. How do you do? Won't you sit down? We haven't much room. Here, take this tool. Thank you, Mrs. McWilliams. Mm -hmm. This is my brother, Tom. How are you? Mr. Mr. DeBose is an actor. How interesting. You're the first actor I've ever met, Mr. DeBose. <laughs> the woods are full of them, Mrs. McWilliams. Uh, Mr. DeBose says he can get us both in pictures. Oh, how wonderful. My boys are trying so hard, and they've got talent. Really, they have, Mr. DeBose. Uh, well, why don't you sing for him, boys? Well, later on, Mom. Uh, tell me, Mr. DeBose, how can you work this miracle? It's really no miracle, Tom. You see, I have a relative that's a producer, and, of course, I've done considerable work myself. There's really nothing to it when you know the role. <laughs> Mr. DeBose says it's all poor. Who you know? He knows the right people. And you're going to introduce my boys to director? Mm, something like that. I probably won't be able to get both of you in at the same time. I'll have to take you one at a time. Well, here's your chance, Bill. Oh, no, your chance. No, uh, uh you're more anxious than I am. Uh, 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 we'll flip a coin for you. Nope. This is your chance. Oh, gee, you know that. Well, who knows? If Bill here gets a small part in some horse opera and is good... Opera? You mean my Bill's going to sing an opera? Oh, no, <laughs> Mom. Horse opera is what they call Western pictures. Oh, you see, Mr. DeBose, I'm not very well acquainted with the way they do things out here and the names they use. I understand. But as I was saying... If he's just why tomorrow you may see his name in big electric lights on Hollywood Boulevard. And that's the way things happen out here, overnight. You see, Mommy, it's just like I always said. 
Gosh, Mr. DeBose, I don't know what to say or how to thank That's you. That's all right, my boy. Always glad to help out a newcomer in our magic city. Now I'll have to run along, but I'll be back tomorrow about noon, and we'll go and get started on the right road. Gosh, it's all too good to be true. Oh, uh, almost forgot. My car's laid up in the shop. I wonder if it would inconvenience you any to take your... Oh, heck no. Hey, you got those front wheel fixed, didn't you, Tom? Yeah, the, there's a bill over there already. That's what. Well, can I pick you up, Mr. DeBose? Well, it might facilitate matters. Here, I'll write the address. No, I'll tell you what you do. You meet me at Hollywood and Vine, say, 12 noon. Uh-huh. We can get a bite to eat, and I'll go over the dope with you then. Okay, Mr. Bose, okay. Guys, just imagine. I'm going to be a movie star. It is dusk in a lonely section of the little town of Puente. And in the gloom of approaching night, two figures can be seen faintly discernible in the twilight mist. Gee, Daddy, these rabbits are sure getting fat. Well, they ought to. We have been feeding them enough. Now, let's see. Today's December the 1st. In another three weeks will be Christmas, and we can take them to market. You mean you're going to kill them, Daddy? I'm afraid so, Gilbert. Yeah. If we don't kill them and sell them, we won't have much of a Christmas. Oh, gee, Daddy, it seems a shame to kill them. They're so pretty and soft. Yes, I know. Just the same, we're going to... Say, that sounded like a gunshot. Mm. Listen. What's that? Some guy started his motor and digging out. Gee, he's sure in a hurry. Sounds like he was coming this way. Look, there he comes. Gee, he sure skidded on that turn. You get back by the house. He's going by. He might be a drunk driver. Oh, he almost turned over to that corner. Here he comes. Sure is in a hurry. That's Something fell off as he went by. Did you hear it hit the road? No. Your hearing is better than mine. Come on, let's run across the field of Fourth Avenue and see what happens. <laughs> Barry and this flashlight isn't so good. I don't see anything, though. Maybe the car just backfired, Daddy. Yeah, I guess so. Come on, we better get back Daddy! Down. Daddy! There's a man over there in the ditch. Where? Oh, over here, Daddy. Oh, gee, I'm afraid. Where? I, I don't see... Holy smoke. Is he, is he sick, Daddy? I'm afraid it's worse than that. Come on, son. Let's get back to the house and report this to the police. <laughs> Peterson, this is the spot. Yeah, the sport in San Dimas. Hi there, Sergeant. What do you got? Looks bad. No clues or anything. Where's the body? Oh, hello, McWhorter. Say, you and Peterson sure got out of here quick enough. Yeah, about 11 minutes after we received the call. That's the body? The only one I could find. Take a look at him. Hmm. All dressed for a fancy pet ball or something. Well, the movies. My golly, I'll bet that's it. Nobody wears cowboy outfits like this unless they work in pictures or on the radio. Sounds logical. Cowboy actor, taken for a ride. He's on good bet, all right. Well, let's look at him. I've already examined the body. There's a bullet hole in the back of his head. Large caliber. Well, Captain Penpraise will be here any minute. Want to wait for him? Bring your photographers and everything. We can go ahead till he gets here. Let's see. About 26, maybe 28. Large caliber bullet wound in his head. According to Crandall's story, he was shot in the car and dumped out here by the road. Better get Crandall over here. I'll get him. That was a police car. Probably Penfers. Yeah, but there sure isn't much to go on. Eh, not much. Sometimes it doesn't take much to catch a criminal and convict him. You said it. Well, here's Captain Penfers. Over here, Captain. Whoever said it was a nice night for a murder must have known about this. Foggy, chilly, desolate surroundings. Here's Crandall. Oh, hello, Captain. Oh, Peterson. Well, Sergeant Swartz, I didn't see you. Oh, hello, Penfers. Oh, yeah. This is Gilbert Crandall. He's the man who phoned Sergeant Swartz. It's Crandall. This is Captain Penfrey, the sheriff's officer. Well, that's nice. Randall. Well, let's hear the whole story. Well, uh, there isn't much to tell. My son, Junior, and I was feeding the rabbits when we both heard what we thought was a gunshot. A second later, we heard a car start up and come tearing down the road in this direction. Whoever was driving was either drunk or in a big hurry. Any idea what kind of a car it was? Well, it was pretty dark, but I'm sure it was a sedan, a fairly new one. Anything else? No, that's all. Well, you forgot to tell about the piece that fell off, Daddy. Well, who's this, your son? Uh, yes, this is Gilbert, Jr. Uh, Gilbert, this is Captain Penfrey. Pleased to meet you, Captain. Well, <laughs> you're quite a young man. Uh, what is that you said about something that fell off the car? Yeah, I've forgotten all about that. Uh, just as the car passed the house, we heard something hit the road as though a part of the car had come loose. You see, he turned the corner by our house so fast he almost turned over. Let's get over to your place and take a look around. 
You boys get over there. There's something investigating I want to do first. Yeah, yeah. all right. Oh, uh, you stay here with me, McWhorter. Oh, sure, Captain. There isn't much to do. Swartz said there wasn't any identification on the body. Looks a little like it might be robbery. Well, the interesting belt buckle. Handmade from silver with WM engraved on it. Hmm. Well, that's something. Let's see what else. This ring looks like it might be the insignia for some secret order. There might be something back of it. Hey, here's his hat. The label gives a store in Kansas City, Missouri. Yeah, ten-gallon Stetson. Well, that doesn't help much, but we'll check on it. You know, his wallet missing makes me think he might have been killed and robbed. What do you make of the clothing? Cowboy, but the clothes are too new. Well, I had an idea. You might have worked in the movies. What do you think? Why, well, George Mac, I think you've hit it. We can check through central casting in the casting offices of the different studios. On the other hand, he might work in radio. So we'll check everything. Well, I examined his fingertips, and I don't think he plays a string instrument. But that doesn't prove much. Well, we better get the body moved to the morgue. Yeah. And at the same time, I'll... It. Who's that? Sounded like Peterson. Yes, there he comes. Well, we found it, all right. Something did fall off the car. Good. What was it? This. A Chevrolet hubcap. We found it on the left side of the road. Well, now we've really got something to work on. I'll phone headquarters right away. You boys can get busy with the tire marks on the pavement. According to Crandall, the guy was driving a sedan with a hubcap missing on one of the left wheels. <laughs> missing hubcap. The killer in his rush from the scene had narrowly missed turning over on a sharp corner, and in doing so, the strain had dislodged the gleaming hubcap. Telltale evidence that might hang him. Police and sheriff cars combed the district in and around Los Angeles, searching for a dark Chevrolet sedan with a missing hubcap on the left side. In the meantime... Here's a report from Kansas City. No dice. Contact all the men's stores? Yep. What about the buckle and the ring? You tell them, Larry. Me and Mahoney checked every fraternal organization, and none use a ring like this. Yeah, but Carmack's got an idea, though. Yeah, what? Uh, it might be a family crest or something. I couldn't find anything on it, though. And as far as tracing these initials on the buckle to anybody, that's out, too. Well, thanks, boys. Keep trying. Okay. All right, Captain. Captain Penfrey is speaking. Federal casting calling. We have a report for you on the 20 murder victims. Good. Let's have it. Well, thanks anyway for your trouble. Captain Pencraze waited for reports on the missing hubcap. His best clue. Soon calls began coming in, slow at first, then faster and faster. But as each was checked, each suspect was cleared. Alibis, hubcaps, rings, buckles, cowboys, movies, all went through the captain's mind like a gigantic kaleidoscope. Then on the streets of Hollywood appeared extras telling of the brutal killing of the cowboy. yellow cab driver, Murray's white woman. Paper makes this. Hey, let me see that picture. It sure, it just happened last night. Now you Good can... Lord. It's him. You know the guy, mister? Sure. You do? Well, who is he? Why was he worse? Was he afraid? Hey, wait a minute. I'll be darned. The guy must be nuts the way he walked up. Go on. Extra! Captain Penclays, the car you're looking for is mine, and your murdered cowboy is my twin brother. I'm sorry, Mr. McWilliams. It'll be a terrible shock to your mother, I'm afraid. Yeah. I don't know quite how to tell her. She had so much faith in Bill. Well, don't worry. We'll have the killer in a few hours. What's the license number of your car? It's a green 1937 Chevy Town sedan. The number is 484... 547. That's a Missouri license, of course. We'll radio that number to all cars. You go back to the auto court and tell your mother. Keep in touch with me, though. Yes, sir. What I can't understand is why this DuBose killed him. When we pick up DuBose, we'll find that out. Then, while newsboys screamed their leather lungs hoarse in the streets of Hollywood... A well-dressed man stood before police judge of Ontario, California. A quiet, sit town, east of Los Angeles. You are charged with drunk driving. 
Are you guilty or not guilty? Guilty, Your Honor. One hundred dollars. You realize, of course, that I'm an actor in Hollywood, and my brother-in-law is a big producer. My wife is a direct descendant of President Buchanan. I'm very well connected $50 with... $50 of which is suspended. Oh, Your Honor, that's splendid of you. <laughs> I can use that 50 uh, Where do I pay my fine? I'll take it. Here's a receipt all made out. Oh, thank you, officer. And thank you, Judge. I really didn't mind spending the night in jail at all. You're very accommodating. Well, if I were you, I'd lay off the booze. Next time, you might not be so lucky. Suppose you'd kill somebody. Yes, I understand, Your Honor. My, that would have been terrible. Suppose I had killed somebody. Well, <clears throat> good day, gentlemen. Good, good day. day. You're a nice guy. Yeah. We don't get him that nice in here very often. Mm-hmm. Says his name's uh, Alvin Barker, uh, and he's in the movies. Away, yeah. I don't think I ever saw him, though. Well, oh, me neither. But I bet he gives the women an extra old. thrill. Calling all cars. Wait a minute. Attention oh. all cars. The killer in the Puente cowboy murder case is a well-dressed man named DeBose, driving a green Chevrolet sedan. Missouri license. Number 484... just walked out of here. He had a Chevy with a Missouri license. You're right. Come on, we can still catch him. Which way did he go? There he is. He's just starting to start. Hey, you. Wait a minute. Careful. You may start to shoot. Get your hands up. Get him up. What? Well, surely, gentlemen, there must be some mistake. Sure there is. The mistake is that you're driving a Missouri Chevy with a missing hubcap. Come on, get out of there. What? What? Oh, this is ridiculous. What's the charge? There's nothing ridiculous about this, my friend. And the charge is murder. Barker was brought to Los Angeles, where he gave various other names, including Picor and Dubose. He was brought to trial, but by some quirk, quirk of fate, the jury brought in the verdict of manslaughter. Picor was sentenced to San Quentin for the term prescribed by law. Another example of the criminal who is learning that crime does not pay. Now, just a reminder, not to forget your friendly gesture to the cast, the sponsor and to me, by seeing your Rio Grande dealer within the next day or two. Thank him for calling all cars. Wish him a Merry Christmas, and enjoy the personal satisfaction of justifying our confidence in our calling all cars friends. And now, Rio Grande, Mel Williamson, your writer and producer, Bill Hatch, and your orchestra, and your cast, Join me in wishing you a Merry Christmas. Los Angeles County Sheriff's Office calling all cars, attention all cars, cancellation broadcast 265 regarding a missing person. Suspect in this case is now in custody. That's all. Rolling. This is your narrator, Frederick Lindsley, bidding you good night for Rio Grande. at this time, Rio Grande will present Three Faces West. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.